Well, good evening. Welcome to Tuesday Night Bible Study. Um, I'm so excited to be here with you all tonight. We're going to talk um, for the next couple of times I'm with you about submission to God and what does it mean to be submitted to God. Um, for um, tonight, I'm hoping you'll grab your Bibles and a notebook and a pen and maybe jot some things down and uh, study some things out for yourself. Um, but let's go ahead and go before the throne of grace and let's pray and ask the Lord to meet us um, here and uh, and then we're going to jump into James chapter 4. Father, thank you that the entrance of your word brings light and it brings understanding. Father, I ask that you would cause light to come tonight as we open your scriptures, um, your holy word, your basic instructions to us for Christian living. Father, that you would help us to know and understand um, what our role is in submission um, and what godly submission, uh, submission to God looks like. Lord, I pray that you would make my tongue as the pen of a ready writer, that I would be able to um, speak forth what uh, your spirit has given me in Jesus name. Amen. So we are going to start tonight in James chapter four, um, and we're going to start in verse six. Um, and this is what it says. Uh, now, this is James, um, and he is writing a letter uh, to the church. Um, he is writing a letter to fellow believers. Um, so in James chapter four and starting in verse six, it says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So that was James 4, uh, starting in verse 6 and going through verse 8. You'll notice that there's a order um, to things um, you, in verse seven. It says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. The understood subject there is you. So you have to submit yourself to God. And then the next thing it says is resist the devil and he will flee from you. Again, the understood subject is you. You have to resist the devil and he will flee from, from you. In verse eight, it says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Again, the understand subject of that um, scripture is you draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So there's a couple of things that I pick up on right away out of this portion of scripture. First of all, submit is an action. Resist is an action and drawing near is an action. There is a, um, there is a response that is required in order for us to be actively doing these things. And I don't think it's a, it's a coincidence or, uh, you know, happenstance that the order is you submit yourself, you resist the devil, you draw near to God, and then he draws near to you. Um, so that being said, um, a few weeks back, I don't know, maybe a month ago at this point, we started out my time of uh, Tuesday night Bible study talking about the believer's authority. And during that time, we talked about um, God's original intent, which was to uh, when he created Adam, um, he gave Adam dominion over the earth. He gave him authority over the earth. And we know this to be true because in Genesis 2, it talks about how Adam named the, the, the creatures that God created and whatever he called them, that is how they were known. And so when you have the ability to name things, it denotes an authority to do so, that you've been given an authority to do so. In the same token, um, we are um, called to um, 
submit ourselves to God. Again, the understanding being you have to do it. Who makes you submit? You have to make you submit. Not even God himself will make you submit. And that's because he created us with a free will and a right to choose, the ability to choose him or not. So keep that in mind. The other thing is that because submission has to be done by you, that if you submit yourself to the devil, you then are not in a position to resist the devil. So what does the word submit mean? In this section uh, and portion of scripture, we just completed submission or submit means to arrange under. That's simple to arrange under. So in other words, we're being told to arrange ourselves under God. And if we arrange ourselves under God, then we legally have the right to resist the ability to resist the devil. And he in turn has to flee from you. But if we're not walking in that arranged under God posture, when we go to resist the devil, he's not necessarily going anywhere. So we want to make sure that we understand that uh, submission means to arrange under. You arrange yourself under God, and now the enemy has to arrange himself under your feet. Authority is in existence because God created it. And there is rank in God. There is the ability to arrange ourselves under him. So we would just want to be aware of that. Um, go with me real quick um, to... Um, First Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to, we're going to do a lot of scripture while we're talking about this. Um, because I recognize and understand that it's either something that maybe you haven't heard in the last decade, um, preached or taught, um, from the pulpit, but it is a biblical, um, mandate from the Lord. Um, it, it is instructions he provides us. And he does that in multiple places in, um, in, in the, in the scripture. Um, so it's real important that we get it and we understand. So go, going to first Corinthians 15, um, and we're going to start in uh, verse 20 and we're going to read through uh, verse 28. It says, but in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep for as by a man came death. Speaking of Adam, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. Speaking of the finished work that Jesus um, did for as in Adam all die. So also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God, the father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death for God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him that God may be all in all. 
So Paul is talking to the Corinthians about the fact that authority comes from God. And just as death, spiritual death, reigned through one man, Adam, spiritual life occurs through one man, Christ. And that Christ has been given the authority to bring all things into subjection to his lordship, to his leadership. And therefore, we have the privilege and the opportunity to submit ourselves, to arrange ourselves under his authority, allowing him to be the Lord of our life in order that um, he may present to God those who have received the gift. So um, jump with me, if you would please, um, to uh, First Peter and chapter 2, um, because Peter in addressing the church it speaks almost the same thing that James does to the church starting in verse 13 it says excuse me it says be subject for the lord's sake to every human institution whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants of God on our Everyone love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor servants be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust for this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly for what credit is it? If when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure. But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin. Neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Now, note, he started this, this section of the letter saying, be subject to the Lord, be subject for the Lord's sake, excuse me, to every human institution, whether it is to the emperor or to governors. In other words, be subject to authority. Arrange yourself under authority. It's real important that we understand that in, in, in God's kingdom, which is the kingdom that we are translated into, right? When we accept Jesus as our savior, that is the kingdom in which we are translated into. And therefore we answer to his authority. And so Peter is saying in this, when we answer to his authority, we must recognize the authority that exists in the natural world. In this day and age, um, there's a lot of people touting um, and talking about their right, what their rights are, and that they have the right to do X, Y, or Z. I can remember when my son was small and uh, growing up, he's an 
full grown adult now, but I can remember when he was small and growing up, there were times where um, as he was learning American history in school and stuff, he would come home and he'd say, I have rights. And um, I would look at him and say, Bubba, in this house, we are not a democracy and you don't get a vote. And so you need to do what I say, because I am the person in authority over you in the natural. And I am asking you to do clean your room because it's a hot mess. And you need to obey. So it's important that we understand that in the kingdom, there is um, authority. And it is biblical. It is not um, a negative. Um, there, there should not be a con- negative connotation that comes with that word. But there is authority. And we are to arrange ourselves under God. And by arranging ourselves under God and the authority that he puts in our lives, when we do the arranging... Then we set ourselves up to be able to resist the devil and he then has to be subjected to us and obey and, and, and leave us. It's a beautiful thing. So I want to encourage y'all in that. Um, when you submit, um, submit, subject, subdued, they kind of all go together and they're arranged by divine order of God. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So we want to um, make sure that we understand that we should arrange ourselves under the authority of God. And that looks like being submitted to his, his, his people and those that he places in authority over us. It's real important that we understand that. In Matthew 8, um, Jesus, uh, well, in Matthew 8, there's an interaction between Jesus and a, cent- a Roman centurion. Now, we all um, who have been in church for longer than a second understand that in the gospels, the, uh, nation of Israel was under Roman authority. Um, so in the time that Jesus came, it was under Roman authority, um, and rule. And, um, so th- This interaction between Jesus and this centurion is a demonstration of understanding submission. Yes, it's a it's a it's a beautiful example of faith as well. Um, And we certainly don't want to negate that. Um, But um, I want to draw out this example because it's a beautiful example of someone who understood what it was to be subject and under authority. Uh, So starting in Matthew chapter eight and verse number five, it says when he had entered, he being Jesus, when he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, truly, I tell you, with no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at 
at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, go, let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. So in this uh, portion of Matthew, basically this centurion comes to Jesus and he says to him, I've got a servant who's sick and I need you to help. And Jesus says he's willing to do that. In fact, he says, I will come. I will go with you. I will go with you um, and heal him. But the centurion recognizing that he um, understood authority indicated that he wasn't worthy to have Jesus come under his roof. But instead, he exercised his faith and said, hey, just say the word and my servant is going to be well, which is which is true that there in and of itself is a whole lesson. We need to speak the word over our circumstance and our situation, applying faith to what we say. And then let's not curse ourselves by saying the opposite. But he expresses that he understands authority, that he himself is subject to authority and that he has men who are subject to his authority and how that works, where he gives the command and they do what he says. Boy, we really overcomplicate it, don't we? We make it so difficult, don't we? We make it so challenging Like it's such a big deal, but truly, if we would just follow, (laughs) follow the words the Lord gave us in the Bible, you know, some use the acronym for Bible basic instructions before leaving earth. Um, I'm sure y'all have heard that before. Um, there was a, a, a song that came out, I don't know, 20 five ish years ago um, about basics, bake, basic instructions before leaving earth. Well, it's all found in the Bible. And our job is to line ourselves up, arrange ourselves under the authority of the Lord, the authority of God, arrange ourselves under that by following those instructions. It's not complicated. We make it complicated. You know, the Bible also says that we're to die to ourselves and pick up our cross and follow, follow him. And so that again, the understand sub, uh, understand subject, understood subject of, of that uh, verse is you, you have to die to yourself. You have to pick up your cross and follow him. So if we go to Romans 13, again, this is the apostle Paul. And just like in uh, first Corinthians 15, um, he is speaking now to uh, the Romans and he's writing a letter to the church at Rome. And he says, let every, uh, starting in verse one, he says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resist what God has appointed. And those who resist incur judgment. Verse three says for rulers are not a terror to God, to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval. 
for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you also pay taxes for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them. Taxes to whom taxes are owed. Revenue to whom revenue revenue is owed. Respect to whom respect is owed. And honor to whom honor is owed. Again. We're arranging ourselves under God. And when we arrange ourselves under God, it means that there is authority that we come under. You cannot operate in the place of authority until we have given God his place in our lives. It's real important that we come to understand that just, I don't know, a couple of weeks back. uh, No, last week, I think it was, we talked about seek him first and his, his kingdom first and his righteousness. And then everything is added to you. When we talked about not being anxious, we talked about how we have to have that priority. We have to arrange ourselves under God. And because we're arranged under God, that looks like we will submit ourselves to authority in the natural. In the body of Christ and in the kingdom of God, there is rank. You may not be able to respect everything that a person in authority says or does, but you must respect the place and position they are in. Otherwise, you fail to respect God. It's that serious. Think about this when you're a child and growing up and the Bible is real clear in Ephesians. It says, honor your father, children, obey your parents in the Lord, honor your father and mother that it may go well with you for this is the first commandment with a promise that it, that you may live long on the earth. And so when we're, when we're small, When we're children, when we're small, that mama and daddy are placed in authority over you. God has entrusted you to them. And we, as small children, have to learn obedience and submission to that authority. Now, I'm sure if you've been around the church world for longer than a second, all of us have encountered leaders who um, have not necessarily exhibited godly character at every turn. The Bible is really clear that we're to pray for those that are in leadership over us, that we're to pray for those that have authority over us. So we don't want to negate the fact that we have a responsibility. And alongside that, we have the responsibility to respect and honor them. If we can't respect and honor them because of the actions that we see, we must still respect and honor them because of the place that they have in the kingdom. Rebellion against authority is rebellion against what God has instituted.
First Thessalonians um, 5 and uh, verse 12. Paul in church uh, in uh, writing his letter to the church at Thessalonica. He says, we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. You know, I had the privilege just a couple of weeks back to um, teach in the children's ministry at the church I attend, and uh, they are uh, the the elementary age children are learning about the armor of God, and it's a beautiful thing because we want them to be equipped and suited up and trained up from a very young age to know who they are because of whose they are. And have all the all of the uh, tools that they need in order to um, wage a good war against the uh, against the enemy, resisting the enemy, um, being submitted to God. And um, during my time with them, we were talking about um, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, not in the power of your might. Not in the power of mom or dad's might or, um, you know, but in the power of his might, in the power of God's might. And we talked about David. Before he was ever a king, he was a shepherd boy and he was submitted to the authority in his life. And that submission looked like he went being the youngest. He was out in the field with the sheep, taking care of his father's flock. But while he was out there in the field, taking care of his father's flock, he was presented with opportunity to learn some skills. Not necessarily because he knew at some point there was going to be a giant named Goliath he was going to have to deal with, but rather it was just the nature of keeping and tending the sheep. And so there was the lion and the bear. And, and I, so as I was talking with the students about this, I said to them, you know, David was sent by his father to the battle to go check on the status of his brothers. And the Leah paraphrase is he took some cheese and crackers with him, some provisions with him for his brothers from his father. And when he arrives, he arrives at the time that Goliath was coming out to taunt the armies of Israel. Again, David was a man who understood, a young man who understood authority. And so he starts to inquire, like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Like, what is he doing? Why is nobody, why are we standing here and letting him taunt us? What is going on? And then he eventually arrives at the place where he says he's going to go into battle. He'll go into battle. And so he goes before Saul to ask permission to do it. Now, again, we are to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, not our own, his might. And so when David, this young man, comes before Saul, Saul sees him as a boy. And so he's like, okay, you can go out to fight him, but you got to put on my armor. You have to put on my, my armor to protect yourself and to fight with. And when David put it on, 
it didn't fit. We are called to put on the whole armor of God. We are called to be strong in the Lord. You is the understood subject of that, of that verse. You be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because you with God equals victory. But when you try to do it in your own might, in your own power, you get out of order. Again, submission means to a rank, to rank and arrange under. So anyway, I'm telling these students about David and how the armor didn't fit him. Because it wasn't made for him. It was made for Saul, who, if you remember um, the story of God telling Samuel to anoint Saul king, one of the characteristics that's brought out in the in that portion of scripture is that Saul stood head and shoulders above everyone in his tribe. He was a tall man. David was a small boy. And so he finally looks at Saul and he's like, I want to go fight Goliath, but I can't do it in this. Meaning your armor. And God was with David, obviously. He, he slew Goliath. There was great victory and dominion that occurred. But again, God had prepared him without him knowing he was being prepared for what was coming. God prepared him through his act of obedience in tending the sheep of his father and tending to the sheep of his father by killing the lion and the bear. If we'll submit ourselves to God, then he prepares us for what's to come. So we need to submit ourselves to God. Rebellion against authority in the natural is rebellion against what God has instituted. Young person, obey your father and your mother. Honor them. That it may go well with you on the earth. We're to know those who labor among us and we're to honor and respect them. Such a key and important piece. Hebrews 13, seven says, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you, the word of God, Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. We don't idol worship leaders. They're human. But they're appointed by God in our lives. To learn from To imitate their faith. And so we have to be wholly submitted to God and submitted to those that ha he has placed in authority over us. Otherwise, we end up just being a hot mess. You have to submit yourself. In kingdom operations, no one is to make you submit. You are to submit yourself willingly and freely doing it. A good leader is not looking for what you can do for them. 
they're looking out for your well-being. Because they will have to give an account for how they stewarded those the Lord gave them. In this day and age where everyone in culture is screaming about their rights and that they have the right to do things and to say things and to be things, the church of Jesus Christ should be ranked and arranged under its leader. And those that have been put in authority over them and we should be spiritual enough that we discern who God's choice is it's a weighty thing to speak against those that God has put in leadership we shouldn't be so loose with our words if we see a leader doing something that we know is not the character and nature of God Boy, that should break our heart and cause us to get on our knees and pray for them, not talk about them at the five and dime, at the coffee shop, sit and have a gossip session. Respect the place. Otherwise, we don't respect what God has done. So submission is a a spiritual word. It's a biblical concept. And we're going to dive into that a little more deeply the next time we're together. But I just want us to sit with that. Ponder that. Meditate on that. Get in the scripture for yourself and study it out. Don't just take my word for it. Get your Bible. Read it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word which brings light and understanding. Father, thank you that it is your desire for us to be submitted to you, to be arranged under you and those that you have placed in authority in our lives. Lord, I pray that as we uh, leave tonight, as we close out this time of study, Father, that we would just allow that to settle in on us over the next days and weeks to come, Father, that your Holy Spirit would prick us about how we are interacting with those that are in authority over us, whether it's a boss or a parent, if we're a child, and our husband, how it is that we are supposed to be interacting like Peter admonished the the believers that whether it's a good boss or a bad boss, you should be submitted to their authority and demonstrating your love for God in that submission. So father, I pray that as we go seal your word in our hearts, cause it to take root that we would spiritually align ourselves the way that you have called us to. In Jesus' name, amen.